18 years is such an interesting number. 18 theoretically gives you all these privileges, but you're still perceived as extremely young and inexperienced. 18 is when all these doors are supposed to stand open in front of you, but you are constantly underestimated and keep bumping into this glass ceiling. My name is Zofia Kierner. I am 18 years old and a senior at Phillips Exeter Academy outside Boston. I am also the founder and CEO of Girls Future Ready Foundation. The mission of Girls Future Ready is to help girls be ready for a global future and for the betterment of the world by developing crucial skills like confidence, English speaking skills, a global mindset, and public presentation skills, just to name a few. Our five international programs annually impact thousands of young women. Our first program, Girls English Ready, collects and donates English language resources to underprivileged regions of Central Eastern Europe. Over the past 10 years, we've collected 50,000 of these resources. Girls Global Ready annually connects 100 girls from Poland with English-speaking mentors from the US, giving them a chance to develop a global mindset. Our Her Story project gives girls access to mentors that bring them into different career fields they want to explore in the future by creating tangible final products. Our Her Story masterclasses have inspired hundreds of girls to explore different career fields for their future. For the fight against the stereotypical thinking of girls and for influencing systematic changes in the Polish educational system, I was named the most influential activist by Vogue and a rising star of the Ambassadors of Polish Innovation. With full confidence, I can say that I've achieved a lot for the good of others throughout my relatively short life. But over the years, I've experienced layers and layers of discrimination because of my age. The very first layer was built when I was eight years old and was just starting my first charity project. I had just returned from my summer vacation, part of which I spent at a public Polish school. I realized that the way English was taught in Polish schools was deeply flawed, and I knew I had to do something to change it. So with a complete belief in my own ability to do something good, I stood at the door of my school principal's office. And that is where I was met with the very first wall. It's not that simple, Zofia, I heard. You're way too young to lead such a large initiative. But in the meantime, parents and teachers ran lots of fundraisers, from money to clothes to bottle caps, you name it. I wanted to do something similar, just with gently used books. I left her office with a clear response. We don't trust you. But nevertheless, I persevered and would meet with her every single week for eight months until she finally let me run a small book drive at my school. To long, cut a long story short, the project was a really big success. But behind this one success stood eight long months of rejection and a process full of closed doors. And that is the process that I want to talk to you about today. There are so many young activists in the world that have an idea to do something amazing for others. But even though they're extremely talented and motivated, they are constantly met with glass ceilings and closed doors. And so they resign and they join the group of young adults that adults just love to talk about, the lazy and phone addicted Generation Z. I am here to stand as an example of someone who has not given up, that it is possible, but it takes blood, sweat, and tears, and hundreds of embarrassing moments, and emails from adults like, stop emailing me. I don't have the time to entertain little girls. Come back when you're older or once you actually accomplish something. It shouldn't be this way. We young people should not be limited from making an impact on our world solely because of our age. We want to be your equals. And before that does not happen, we can't truly realize our potential. So save us a seat at the table. 
In return, we promise to come with our power, our young time and fresh perspective, our will to make an impact on the world, and our knowledge of innovation, technology, and the more mental and emotional side of humanity. Our future is your future as well. Of course, this table that I'm talking about is metaphorical. My concept of an open table is leaving the necessary space for young people to be a part of equal conversations. Being older, having more money or a high title on your business card are not reasons to set yourselves higher than us. And they're not clear indicators of doing what is best for the world. We are tired of forcing ourselves into these conversations to prove that we're worth your time. Give us the chance to be ourselves. Our time is right now because it's now that we're young and that we have the power and energy to work towards our joint future. If we want to use this time wisely, we need the space to grow. And that can only happen if you start taking us seriously. It's true that we value you in our development because we need you. We need you to give us trust, to give us opportunities for collaboration and financial support. We need your mentorship. But one, take us seriously. To everyone in the room right now, raise your hand if after an important presentation, uh, receiving an award, or pretty much accomplishing anything, someone came up to you and said, say congratulations to your parents. Or, oh, so you're doing this thanks to your parents, right? Good, none of your hands went up. That was the goal. <laughs> it is such a weird thing to say after a success, isn't it? But it's a phrase that we young people have had to get used to over the years. It's such a social stigma to associate young success with the parents of an individual rather than the successor alone. Are we not capable to achieve success on our own and change the world alongside you? Help us. Help us do this. Push us forward. Treat us as your equals. We're not your competition. Two, open a seat at the financial support table. So many times I have walked into investment rooms and right away heard, so where's the adult? Where's the CEO? And who are you, little girl? And often have been turned around before even given the opportunity to open my mouth. The reality is it's impossible to grow something to a large scale without financial support. I would beg for the support from hundreds of organizations. Sometimes I hear admiration for my work and ideas, but rarely does it translate to actual financial support with an adult brand. And then a few days later on LinkedIn, I would see these projects based on really similar ideas to mine that are less developed, but led by adults that are receiving these sponsorships. We need the financial support to be there. And we need that from you. Three, give us more visibility. Media sensations sell best. News about a celebrity's new child or expensive new shoes sell really well and they seem more valued than educational initiatives or knowledge. It is so hard for us young people to break through this information chaos in that we live in. Don't be shy to like and comment on our posts on social media about our work or spread the word about what we do. Sometimes this is our only way to get news about our work out into the world. Invite us to conferences where you think the voice of young people should be heard. There are so many events about Gen Z or articles about teenagers, but we're often not asked to participate. Here's an example. A few years ago, I was invited to a conference at a local university under the title of Gen Z in the Workplace. Seems like a reasonable conference to have. But I was invited the day before the conference, so I assumed someone from the panel must have canceled. I showed up anyway and did my part, but I sat on stage in a panel alongside 50-year-old men that were talking about what young women want in a workplace. And it's interesting because 
a lot of the things they were saying were not necessarily true. You adults love to analyze us and observe us, but next time, why don't you just ask? <laughs> this also extends towards the media. I know it's so easy to endorse a celebrity or someone from a huge organization because it means a lot of money is involved, and it's money that we young people simply don't have. But I still ask this of you. Give us a space to share a piece of our brain with you, to talk about our projects, initiatives, and passions. I promise you won't regret it. And finally, number four, open a seat at the mentorship table. We young people need a strong voice from older idols and mentors that can help guide us into a future career. But don't just talk to us and give us advice. Give us the space to create tangible final projects under which we can sign our name and add it to our resume. Don't build walls in front of us. We're not your competition. And it works. We see so many young initiatives that are making their way into the world. Greta Thunberg, age 16, Malala Yousafzai, age 23, X Gonzalez, age 21, just to name a few. There are so many girls here at Girls Future Ready that are taking this leap towards initiative. But we need your helping hand. Adults, the actions you take today will be what impacts our world in 20 years. The quality of our leadership tomorrow depends on the respect with which you treat us today. We want to be your equals. We crave your attention and support, and we're ready to receive it. Just give us your helping hand. Save us a seat at the table. Our future is your future as well. The girls at Girls Future Ready are ready to build our joint future for you and for your children. And to all the young people in the audience, if adults don't save you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And join me at Girls Future Ready. Thank you.